Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahol with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter at Second Swing. And today we've got another fun driver comparison test for you. Thomas is going to hit some shots with the TaylorMade M1, M3, M5, and Sim drivers. We're going to test them out using TrackMan. And we're going to see how this data compares. I'm very interested in uh, seeing what this data shows us because TaylorMade has been one of the premier driver manufacturers out in golf for several years and decades now. Thomas, I, I want to get your insight before we get started here because, um, you know, as a fitter, I'm sure you've fit hundreds of golfers for TaylorMade drivers over the years. Um, and so what are you expecting to see here and what are you going to look for the most? So what I really want to see is the changes in technology kind of year over year. Essentially, we've got a changing here by kind of one year. TaylorMade comes brings out with a new driver. Take a look at what changes in ball speed and spin rate um, and carry distance. Yeah. And then kind of look, look at the golf club obviously is very, very important as well. TaylorMade has definitely made some little tweaks every year to the, the look of the club looking yeah. down at there as well. So um, for me, it's going to come down to, you know, whatever one is going to go the straightest and probably spin the least. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's one of those key elements of club fitting for a driver, especially is making sure that spin rate is the right distance. And then of course, the dispersion and the accuracy in terms of your target line. So um, this is going to be a fun test. Now to make sure everything is as unbiased and you know equalized as possible. We've got the same golf shaft, the same loft. Um, everything is adjusted to make it as unbiased as possible, right? Yep, so we have the 10.5 degree driver on every, every club. And then for the hazardous smoke green 6.0 70 gram golf shaft. It's one of the stock options with the TaylorMade SIM driver this year. Okay. So I thought I'd throw that in the mix here and kind of see how that all kind of compares across the board with the same golf shaft. All right, awesome. Yeah, let's get to it, right? Let's do it, let's see how these Beauties perform. All right, Thomas, so we'll start with the M1 here and just kind of go up into the most recent models from TaylorMade. So okay. uh, I'm excited to see how this plays out. I'm, this is this is going to be a good one, I think. Yeah, good, low spinning club heads, mm -hmm. um, adjustable as well. The nice and the unique thing is they've had a lot of adjustability with yeah. these drivers in the last few years as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. We've done these before and I we really like the Callaway one recently and that was awesome. And watching that technology how it's changed a little bit but also how some of the older ones keep up has been fun to see and so I'm curious especially about this M1 because this is still a really high performing driver. All right, Thomas, I was five with the M1 and the dispersion is pretty darn good here uh, based on the map here. And, you know, we should mention the 10 and a half degree loft is going to change, you know, the, the distance numbers in particular and the spin and the, the height uh, compared to what we usually see in your tests here. So the distance numbers might not be uh, as far down the fairway, so to speak, but dispersion seemed pretty good there, right? Yeah, so we did the 10 and a half degree driver head versus nine, even though I play a nine because I couldn't find a M1 and an M3 mm -hmm. and an M5 all in a nine degree head. Yeah. Just based on our inventory with COVID and everything going on. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a little bit right. challenging to find used clubs. Um, so that's why I chose a 10.5. Just keep it as unbiased as, as we mm -hmm. possibly could there too. But you're right. It was definitely a higher ball flight. That, that was for sure. Right off the bat, I'm like, that thing is like going to the moon. <laughs> right. Um, I definitely looked like it was spinning a little bit, a little bit more than I would like. Um, I feel like I was losing out a little bit, a little bit of distance, but the dispersion on those wings, yeah. they were basically dead straight every single time. Right. So there is something to be said about having loft on a driver, but too much loft is going to cause the ball to spin and not go as far. Right. I mean, these are just barely off the center line here. You got just a few feet off of your center aiming point to the left a little bit. A three are just barely left of the line, and then you had a couple just right of the line. Your average dispersion is right down the center. So. Um, that's great. I just wanted to ask you about the look and the feel of the M1 because this is what 2015, 2016 driver here. Yep. Um, we're kind of tailor-made sort of this sort of when they sort of um, I guess faded out that all white club head and they brought in that kind of stripe along the leading edge there. What do you think about that look? And it has definitely kind of molded since then, but that's sort of the first we saw that look. Yeah, so the stripe along the leading edge, it's got this little notch that kind of goes and cuts in mm -hmm. and cuts back out. Helps me line up to the middle of the club face. So I do really like that. For me, looking down at it, I, you know, I was looking at a lot, it looked like it had a lot of loft. Mm -hmm. um, so I was having a little harder time. That's more the loft on the club head yeah. than, than anything. 
Um, but it, yeah, it's a good looking club head. Um, you know, Taylor may bring out new, great new drivers every single year, and they all have a very similar shape to the head, but they have kind of different patterns and different yeah. alignment aids and different colors kind of every year there too. Yeah. But, One thing yeah. too to mention is we're not messing with the adjustability too much, but they have, you know, it has gotten a lot more, uh, I guess, clean. It's been a lot cleaner on the sole, the adjustability yep. features through the years, because that's, there's a lot of, I mean, that's, there's a lot going on there. It's pretty there's clunky with the M1 there, there compared yep. to what you see with the SIM, especially, but also the M5. Um, in the last year's model, so they've really cleaned that up quite a bit, which is nice. But M1, I mean, that's pretty solid. It's pretty straight ball flight. Straight uh, ball for something flight. that yep. should be a low spinning driver. That was pretty solid. So now we'll get into the M3 and see how things have changed. Sounds good. All right, Thomas, the M1 and the M3, your numbers are very close uh, in terms of the comparison here. So average ball speed, 161.2 with each of them. Hmm, interesting. Your club head speed, 110.8 with the M3, 111.0 with the M1. So this is, these numbers are like very similar. This is kind of nuts actually. The spin rate, 2888 with the M1, 2850 with the M3. Okay. So, based on what you know so far, you're figuring the carry and the total distance should be similar. Carry distance with the M1, 275.5, M3, 274.9. And then your total distance was 293.7 with the M1, 294.2 with the M3. So, interesting. Yeah. Extremely similar results here. Yep. Uh, I know, I think in terms of the consistency factor, the spin kind of jumped a little bit more up and down with the the M3. You had one that was down at 2200. Yeah. I think there was one at 33. I hit a couple of really good ones with this one and a couple a little bit off center yeah. with this one there as well. Yeah. Um, but the consistency with the M1 was maybe the dispersion pattern was a little more consistent. My furthest was probably went with the M3, but shortest probably went for this, with this as well too. Yeah, so, so. absolutely. But yeah. I'm just that it's it's kind of funny looking at these numbers how similar they are. Smash factor 145 with the M1, 146 with the M3. So, okay. uh, you know, it, it slightly more distance to be had potentially <laughs> based on this. But those are yeah. extremely minute differences. So now we can move into the M5. Interesting. See if things yeah. change a little bit there. Sounds good. Yeah, Thomas, I think we noticed a bit of a jump here with the M5. I mean, looking at these numbers, the spin dropped significantly, and that really seemed to improve the carry distance and the total distance uh, for you. So spin rate on average 2467, which is down from the 2800 or so from the past two models, yep. which then improved your carry distance by six, and your total distance uh, clipped 300 mark to 304. So big differences there, and I think you hit it on the head, at least from what we saw and then the numbers. The spin's really the big difference here. Yeah, spin is, yeah, spin is definitely king when it comes to kind of club fitting. We can get, anytime we can get that spin rate down a little bit, we're gonna pick up a little bit of distance mm -hmm. there as well. I don't know what my club speed or ball speed numbers were compared to the other two, but all I noticed is when I was in that, when that ball flight, that thing was not as far up in the air and it looked like it kept going Yeah, for sure. It was actually finally able to get catch that net down the end. Finally. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. You mentioned the club speed. So your club speed with the M5 was the exact same as the M1. Okay. 111.0 and then it was 110.8 with the M3. So, I mean, you're, you're exactly. swinging <laughs> very similar throughout this test so far. One thing I wanted to ask you too was look and feel of the M5 and the M3 too. I didn't ask you about yep. that one yet, but both of those and how it compares to maybe the M1 because they got more gray on the club head versus the white of the M1. Yeah, that transition from the, the white and black to now that kind of the gray, the the black or the darker colors going on with this with the M5 and M3. They look fairly kind of similar. The M1 looks completely different for sure. Yeah. It's definitely a, kind of definitely a little different look for sure. Um, I like the colored pattern with with these, and I'll kind of talk about too with the sim. I like the new the new sim driver, how that pattern looks on, on the top of the club face as well. Yeah. There's good looking golf clubs, um, M3, M5, and, and the sim for sure. 
So. Yeah. Well, let's get to that sim. Uh, the last club of our test here, and we'll see how that compares with the other three models we've hit. Sounds good. Wow, that last one was was smoked. Times. I'll try to get that a little extra. I don't know if that club speed jumped or anything on that, but not necessarily. Not really? Just, I mean, your club speed with the sim is about four tenths of a mile per hour faster okay. than uh, the M1 and M5. So you're not really jumping on it any any uh, any faster. But yep. the spin, in particular for the M5 and the sim, dropped quite a bit. So your M5 spin was 2467, as we discussed. The sim spin was 22.32 okay. on average. So that really helped that carry distance. Uh, another two yards compared to the M5. Total distance jumped to 307.6 on average. So some great numbers there. And I mean, the launch angle across the board is anywhere from 12.9 to 13.4. So you're okay. so very oh, consistent there. And so the, really the difference is the spin uh, with all of these clubs, which is yep. Uh, tell, and it's telling, and you, even, you know, that was that's the big thing with Sim this year is the lower spin. This kind of shows that here, that the spin really dropped from just even two years ago at the M3 to the Sim. That's 600 RPM in our test here. Yeah, spin is king. Yeah. I, I'll, say, I'll say that all the time. The spin rate, if you get that spin rate down, keep that launch angle up, it's going to go further. Just going to naturally is. You may lose a little distance if your launch angle drops, so that's why you got to pay attention to yeah. carry distance, where I always kind of talk about carry distance as well. But spending at the end of the day, if you have a high launch, low spin, it's going to go further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And looking at your dispersion here, uh, you know the the sim had it was really tight dispersion out there, and uh, all of them were just a little bit left of the center line. So, um, which is good, you know. And I, and I know you like to kind of play it to the right and then um, maybe yep. drop back left. So, um, and it was the farthest down there as well, which shouldn't be a surprising given the data that we have. So. Yep. Uh, great test here, and again, a testament tailor made for being able to drop that spin over you know the last four years of technology. Yeah, it was such a different ball flight compared to starting out with the M1, where it was it was dead straight every single time, but it was just like I was just gonna yeah. stay up in the air too long and not and it was coming back to me a little bit. With well, that one, yeah, I pulled it just a little bit, so that could be partly the reason why sim versus say for example the the M5, the spin rate was just mm -hmm. a little bit lower as well because it was going a little further left, um, but. It was going further in the day. Yeah. If I can get the ball going a little further, I'm going to have shorter shots in the greens. I'm going to make more right. wedge, wedge shots. I'm going to make more pots. So. Absolutely. Yep. Well, I'm going to give you the data here, and you can kind of break down um, as a fitter what you see out of this okay. test. Sounds good. Okay, Thomas, what can you tell me about this, uh, this test we did? Because I was, I mean, the spin for sure is the first takeaway. Uh, but what can you tell us about that and what you see as a fitter here? Yeah, so first off, club speed with all the, all the clubs were plus or minus half a mile an hour in difference. So, um, hit five balls with each one. My club speed was the same, so pretty similar kind of test here. All 10.5 degrees aloft here. Um, interesting, the ball speed number. So ball speed number was very, very similar between 161.2 to 162.6. So not too much there yeah. with regards to the ball speed and the club speed really changed at all. My smash factor, 14 to 1, 145 to 1446 across the board. But as you mentioned, spin was kind of the, the big takeaway here, yeah. what we kind of noticed with the gradual change from the M1 to M3 and then to the M5, a little bit lower, and then the sim was just a little bit lower there, yet again there too. Um, so we started with the M1, 20, basically 2,900 RPMs of spin. It's a little bit too much, the ball was flying a little bit higher, um, felt like the ball wasn't going quite as far. The height was about 120 feet in the air. Yeah. So I was losing out on a little bit of distance because of spin. Now, we'd, we're not here to change the loft around or mm -hmm. anything like that. We were just kind of testing the, the heads against each other and see which one's kind of performing better. The, then we went to the M3, dropped about 50 RPM to spin. So not too much difference there. Um, that's why the distance-wise, they're almost identical. So yeah. 293 total, 294 total between the, between the two of them. They're both carrying 275. But then we noticed M5 and, and, and the sim was, you know, the spin rate dropped 400 RPMs to, for the M5, and it picked us up about 10 yards. 
mm -hmm. yards is, you know, in, within regards about 400 RPMs of spin is a pretty good change. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I always like to say spin is king. I'll probably say it <laughs> probably too many times in, in videos there. <laughs> Um, but you want to make sure you chase spin in the right way. We want to make sure we can still keep that carry distance up and keep that, yep. that launch angle up so the ball can carry a little bit further. And then the sim, 2200 RPM spin is pretty good. That's, yeah. that's, that's pretty solid across the board. You're, ideally, you're looking at around about 2000 or 2500 is an ideal spin for someone in my circumstances when I swing about 111 miles an hour. Um, players that spin, that swing a little bit softer, a little more spin helps to get the ball in the air, get yeah. the carry, carry distance up. But those players that do swing pretty hard, they need to keep that spin rate down yeah. as well. Um, really interesting, the launch angle, basically the same with right. all of them. So really kind of interesting there. The M1 and the Sim were actually the two highest, 13.3 and 13.4. And the okay. M5 and the M3 were 12.9 and 13. So. Pretty similar with regards to launch, um, but the spin differences was kind of the biggest takeaway for me. Yeah, I think this is almost a way to, you know, this is for sure kind of a tailor-made driver comparison, M1, M3, M5, and Sim. Uh, but with these spin numbers, you can also kind of uh, have a little fitting takeaway, so to speak, here, and that spin matters so much, right? Look at the difference in the numbers, distance-wise, carry, total. Just by dropping that spin 400 and then 200 more RPM, uh, that's what Sim is going to do for you, that's what M5 is going to do compared to these other drivers is just drop that spin for you and that can help you gain 10 to 15 yards yep. on your tee shots which like we mentioned before can be the difference between hitting an entire club or more uh, for your approach shot which will only help your proximity to the hole therefore giving you a better birdie chance. Yeah and then also it's important to kind of talk about this dispersion as well so what's actually kind of interesting is the two that did kind of spin the most also flew the straightest. So yes, mm -hmm. I was losing a little bit of distance, but I kind of talked about when I was first hitting that M1, how it was going pretty much dead straight every yeah. every single time. Uh, so I'm looking at the dispersion pattern here. The purple circle with the M5 was really really solid at 2,500 spin. So it was the straightest one there yeah. that I that I hit. Um, the M1, the blue circle, we had two left and two right. Well, basically they were just left of left yeah. center and just to the right of center. Um, the M3 was pretty good also, very, very nice and straight with the exception of the one where I left the club face open about 20 yards to the yeah. right. That was more kind of human error. But it's also kind of interesting with the sim that I was able to turn it over a little bit more. Now, yeah. if I look at my kind of numbers and see if there's any differences in um, club path or face angle or anything like that, um, the one thing I do notice here with the sim is I was able to get the club face a little bit more closed compared to the others as well. Okay. Um, so my club path was basically minus two to minus three across the board. Um, my face angle was the most closed, so my face to path actually was negative with the sim, which got the ball to curve to the left sure. a little bit. Okay. The others basically kind of matched up with each other. That's why they were going fairly straight and flying pretty straight there too. Sure. So I like to play a little draw. So I. One way for me to get up a little bit distance is to play a little bit of a draw, keep the spin rate down a little bit as well. Yeah, and we show again the the distance. Your both carry total did improve with the sim in that regard, um, but I feel like you wouldn't expect that much of a difference based on uh, in terms of the spin, just based on that slight uh, difference in your club path there. I think a lot of that has to do with the club head as well, and the change in technology over the past few years too. Yep. Uh, definitely played a part into that as well. So this is some really good stuff here you know Taylor made over the years been and still is uh, one of the premier driver manufacturers out in golf uh, and they've been so successful for so many years uh, they kind of went away from the M family this year in terms of the branding to sim it, it appears as if the performance is definitely still there if that if not even better so Taylor made sim uh, is new for 2020 obviously tremendous performance here but any of these drivers are fantastic for the golfers that need to improve their forgiveness uh, and distance off the tee uh, TaylorMade is an excellent option. So any of these drivers, if you're interested, uh, the viewer out there, stop in the Second Swing store, talk to one of our fitters, or contact us online, uh, and one of our experts will be able to help you out and get fit and help you off the tee, improve your distance, improve your accuracy, and help you shoot lower scores. So Thomas, thank you for hitting the shots today and providing the insight.